A few library authors, like the team that creates Svelte, have recently decided to stop using TypeScript and switch over to JSDoc. So let's check it out. All right, so as you can see, the JSDoc system uses type annotations. So if I went ahead and set this S to a one, then the IntelliSense would complain. But now let's first of all take a look at how I actually configured this, which is the JS config. This is basically a TS config, but for JavaScript files. So we basically tell the TypeScript interpreter, I want to allow JavaScript. I want to not compile this in any way. I just want the type checking. I want to check JavaScript. So not just allow JavaScript to be checked. I also want to tell it to check it. I want to preserve JSX because this is a React project. And I want strict mode, so strict null checks. And of course, I want to check both JavaScript files in my source directory and JSX files in my source directory. And as you can see, this works absolutely awesomely. So now let's look at something more complex. This use state right here, of course, gives us a number and a set count function, which is of course a React dispatch that has a set state action for a number. Sure, normally this is inferred, but for our example, we're just gonna type it strictly. And as you can see, we are basically importing the type from React we're importing the next type from React, and then we can just add the number in here. So you can actually use TypeScript types inside of this JavaScript file, basically, using this JSDoc annotation. Sure, it doesn't look all that nice, and because I split it over multiple lines, it doesn't get this cool IntelliSense highlighting, but if I just change that up real quick, then we should see that the highlighting comes back, which it does. And of course, we can also define types that are more complex, so basically interfaces. In this type dev, we basically just put our object with all the types that we need, and then we can give it a name. And now we can see this child component function right here has, first of all, a description with TypeScript normally can't add, but you could of course combine JSDoc with TypeScript to get that description anyway. And then we actually use a partial type, like we would in TypeScript, for our child props. So basically, all of the props defined up here are now optional. And if you check out our component, we can see that's absolutely the case. I can remove this ID and nobody complains. But if I went ahead and added a string as an ID, then the interpreter would complain again because string is of course not assignable to number. So all of this works absolutely awesomely. And there are even features that JSDoc can offer that TypeScript doesn't offer, like this throws bit right here. So if you just hover over this function, we can see it throws an error. And normally in TypeScript, you can't define that a function throws an error. So if you're a library author and want to tell your users, hey, this function can potentially throw an error, please try catch it, then this might be an awesome solution for that. But again, you could of course also combine JSDoc with TypeScript to also get that functionality if you're inside of a TypeScript project. Okay, so this looks quite awesome. And as you can see, JSDoc offers you a lot of other functionality as well. But if you aren't a library author, then I would personally recommend that you'd stick to TypeScript. So how about you check out this video, where I'll show you how to use TypeScript with React properly. Have a good day.